Hello, Iowa. Great to be with you this evening. Governor Burr, great to be here. Yeah, well, thanks for the promotion. I'm sorry, Governor Burr. <laughs> General, Burr, General Burr. Maybe governor someday. Well, we'll see, right? <laughs> we've got a great governor here in Iowa. That That's is for true. sure, we right? Do. We yes. do. You yes, do. Yes, yes. So uh, tell me a little bit about the role that your faith and family play in your life. Wow. You know, I was born um, in a family that had Christian beliefs. Uh, my dad had me and my brother when they were young. And at some point in time in my dad's life and my mom's life, they gave their life to the Lord. I think my, they were probably, I want to say about 20, uh, 30 years old, something like that. So when I was about 12 or 13, that's when I first gave my life to Christ. And so I began walking with God then. I had about eight years where I drifted from the Lord. But when I was 24 years old, I rededicated my life to God a couple years right out of college. And that was the beginning moment of me hearing God's voice, walking with him. I was a business person right out of school, went to University of Texas in Austin, and business and marketing and finance, and that was my world, business. And then I took a job transfer to Atlanta, and I felt a call to ministry. And so that's how my life began this crazy journey of business and ministry. Uh, today I'm a CEO of a private investment bank I co-founded about 20 years ago uh, with my dad. And now we have about 400 employees, but my wife and I are, are pastors. So we started a church about 10 years ago. We've been doing young adult ministry before then for about 17 years. So Christ has been everything to me and to my wife and to our family. We have five kids. And so he has definitely led us on this journey and we're on right now. So everything. Yeah, everything. And uh, that's why it's so important that we protect freedom of conscience and religious liberty. Uh, and we're seeing that under attack right now. What would you do as president to protect religious liberty? Absolutely. Well, you know, right now, all of our freedoms are being under attack constantly. And our nation, I really believe this, was created by God to be this lamppost of freedom where every citizen could enjoy not just freedom of faith and religion, but freedom of press and speech. And we've seen them come under attack all the time because of Marxism, socialism, and now debt, corruption, so many things. And I really believe this. God spoke to me to run because he wants to brighten that lamp of freedom up once again. Now, freedom of faith. This is so important for all of us to know, and I share with young people all the time, that because there's this movement in colleges, you know, Ryan, don't talk about faith too much or whatever you say, but we have a freedom of religion, not freedom from religion. And specifically, we have a right to express it. So we need to do it and share it, but we need to do it in love. And the main message I'm sharing with people, regardless of their faith, because I come across so many people everywhere, is listen, the main words Jesus gave us was this. Let's demonstrate our love for God by showing our love for other people. You know, Jesus never said, hire the government to take care of your neighborhood. He said, love your neighbor. So that's what I'm sharing. Let's demonstrate our faith by loving each other. Yeah. That is so important. And when you were talking about what's going on on our campuses, that reminded me of the woke agenda that mm -hmm. is out there and the lack of, of respect for free speech, right, and of differences of opinion. What will you do as president to stop the woke agenda and to give people their freedom back? Well, you know, right now, um, our country's so divided. So when we go on college campuses, in fact, we were in New England College in New Hampshire just a few days ago. We did a town hall, and we had several people that were from the LGBT community. And we had conversations before the meeting, and they they came to our meeting and then some of them took pictures afterwards. We had a chance to connect. This is one of the greatest divisive issues of our country. More than anything, I know this, that God wants to unite our country. He wants us to be able to, not just that we have to agree on everything. There's some things we can d agree to disagree on, but it's how we relate to each other. So I really believe that this far left woke agenda is one of these things that we need to stand against. But in a better sense though, we need to really start working on how do we win the middle? How do we win the hearts of people and show love? And so when we were in our meeting just the other day, we shared with them truth, we shared with them love, but also just shared with them this, it's time for us to respect each other. And I shared with them our faith and I shared with them just stories about how we can connect. It was like the swords dropped. But when it comes to the woke agenda in schools, we have to protect our kids. So at the, at the primary grade level, high school level, I'm just saying we have to protect all of our children in America. We need to protect them at every single level and make sure that families have are part of the decision making process. So there's an agenda that's out there that's from the world, but we can defeat this through the love of God and through truth. And when we stand for truth, we stand for freedom, we'll protect it. And tell me a little bit about where you stand on uh, support for Israel. 
uh, in the Middle East with everything that is going on. What would your presidency, what would be your Middle East policy with regard to Israel? Well, right now, this is a great time for us to really talk about it because obviously we have international turmoil right now. We're in a war. Um, really, much of my policy uh, involves us being strong here domestically. When we're strong here, we're going to be strong abroad. Putin will pay attention to us. Xi Jinping will pay attention to us. Right now, they're going around us. So Israel, wow, we're here at Faith and Freedom Conference. It's so important for the world to know our heartfelt connection and spiritual connection as Christians and believers here tonight and what Israel means to us. You know, Jesus said this. He said, salvation comes from the Jews. So our salvation, Christ, was Jewish. This whole land is based on the fulfillment, prophetic fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham, but now our promise of our salvation coming from there. So they're an ally. They're a key ally. Uh, we share intelligence. We share resources. We have, a, we have a base there within a base that flies an American flag. So we are, as Israel is strong, we are strong in the Middle East. And so we need to protect that, make sure we are protecting them, and making sure also that we're stronger together. When they have freedom, we have freedom. And so they're going to be one of the greatest strengths against Iran. Any proliferation of nuclear weapons, they're going to stand against that, and we'll stand with them. So the freedom in the Middle East depends on a great relationship with Israel. And so you, will you support aid to Israel from the United States? Absolutely, absolutely. We need to keep that and commit to that. In fact, you know, the Bible says that he who blesses Israel will be blessed. We need to remember that. So uh, what are your current priorities in the federal budget fight that's going on right now? What should Congress be looking at when they're setting the spending priorities? Well, thank you. You know, this is, this is the biggest thing we're facing everywhere we go. So it doesn't matter whether I'm in Iowa, New Hampshire, college campuses, small town America, Everybody asked, in fact, I was in New Hampshire the other day. The woman at the front desk was helping us in. She found out I was running for president. She said, first question, what are you going to do? She said, my rent has just gone from $600 a month to $1,400 a month in two years. This is hurting everybody. The average family inflation is hitting $1,000 a month. So a lot of people ask me this question, why, who are you, first of all, and why are you running? You know, I get this more than anything. And I'm a CEO of an investment bank, and so I have this deep understanding of, of, of debt and what it means and how it impacts you know, inflation and all of a sudden, what are we going to do about it and how it impacts banks today? I met with a small regional bank, and they're saying if the Fed keeps raising rates, that's going to hurt their very assets because they raised them so fast that the T-bills that they have as treasuries you know, they're only worth 75 cents on the dollar. So I'm telling America we're in a perfect storm. And I, what I did is, I, what I mean by that is we have to navigate through this time. We have to be energy independent. We have to solve health care crisis because it has an, we have a plan to reform health care. And when we do that, we'll unleash the economy. But we also have to cut spending. And we have to balance the budget. So I put together a seven-year economic rescue plan to balance the budget. How many of you would like to balance the budget for the first time in 30 years? It's time that we do this. I'm telling people everywhere, if we don't do this in our generation, we'll be known as the generation that prospered the most but sacrificed the least. I'm not willing to let that happen, so that's one key reason I'm running. The other is I'm a pastor. And so the political division that we've had in our country that doesn't allow us to balance the budget, doesn't allow us to fix the border, doesn't allow us to transform health care, it's because most parties... Our party included is more interested in seeing the other party fail than the America succeed, and we've got to change that. So I would begin by ending this division, solving the budget crisis, and moving forward. Well, thank you. We're out of time, but we want to give you a warm Iowa thank you to you and your family for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.